We built glasses that let you identify anybody on the street. The information a tool collects from just a photo of your face is staggering. To use it, you just put the glasses on, then as you walk by people, the glasses will detect when somebody's face is in frame. This photo is used to analyze them, and after a few seconds, their personal information pops up on your phone. Oh, this is That's crazy. June Lee, right? You're, uh, this photo is crazy. This is like from you're from Academy. Bergen County oh. Academies? Yeah. Your your so Korean so name is Ju <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, Cambridge Community Foundation. Okay, that's so stalkery. Oh, hi, ma'am. Wait, are, are you a uh, Betsy? Yes. Oh, okay. I think I uh, I think I met you through like the Cambridge Community Foundation, right? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. It's great to meet you. I'm Kane. Oh wait. Oh, so do you happen to be the person working on like like minority stuff for like Muslims in India at all or something? Uh, yes. Really? Yes. Are you Kashif? Yes. Just oh, I read your work like before. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm oh. Andrew, nice so my mom actually sent me the PBS Nova, like PBS Nova did a whole story on them and Mabel and I watched it and we thought this is really interesting. Partially because the two kids that made this are also two best friends. Kids. Oh. <laughs> Partially because the two students that built these are also best friends and entrepreneurs. Which is giving news girls! <laughs> and we've actually wanted to do like a smart glasses, facial recognition type of story for a while. And watching two undergrad students make these glasses that can look at a stranger and just know their social security number terrified us. Exactly, that's what makes these glasses scarier. Like it only relied on publicly available data. Obviously these guys go to Harvard and they're coding geniuses, but theoretically anyone could manufacture a product like this. Yeah, so they're built off of Meta's Ray-Ban smart glasses, face search engines, and a chat GPT tool that scrapes the internet for public names and like addresses. And their whole goal with these glasses wasn't to sell them, it was to raise awareness about everyday surveillance and just how public everyone's information is. Which is why even though they've been offered a lot of money to sell iX, right, they've turned it all down. And I guess it's not just them, like Meta actually developed their own facial recognition glasses and also decided to not put it on the, the market because of ethical and legal concerns. Well, that's why when the founders posted this teaser video with technology that's not on the market, it went insanely viral. It was written up in New York Times, Forbes, Daily Mail, Verge, and more. So we spoke to the two geniuses and best friends behind iXray, Anfu Nguyen and Kane Aradefio. Anfu and Kane, first of all, how did you come up with the idea for iXray? The idea originally came because we used to run VR Club and a lot of the projects dealt with virtual reality and, um, and AI and how you can merge them to unlock new use cases. And then we knew about PIMIS, which is the reverse face search engine, and kind of just was combining them uh, was how it started. Like, did you get the glasses first? Did you develop, like, the facial recognition first? Like, how did you go about making these? Yeah, it was a software pipeline first. So we were connecting the face search engine and like the AI stuff together to make it fully automatic. And then after that, we did like the um, smart glasses and then tied more databases together to get even more info, like home address and stuff. How long did that take? Coding took like four days. That's kind of fast. <laughs> Only four days. That's really fast. <laughs> and so how did you guys like link up because Mabel and I are always so interested in this as we're partners now in this project. Yeah. So uh, me and Anfield, we had like a, you know, cool meeting story. So like I was working in the maker space, just like building an electric skateboard at Harvard um, for fun. Cause that's, I like to just like build fun tech projects. So we just like happened to be in my room at the same time, um, both building projects and we we're like, Oh, we both like to build things. So um, we like got each other's phone numbers <laughs> and we're like, Okay, we should definitely link over the summer and start building projects together. And we, we eventually did. Yeah, we hear this wasn't the first project that you guys built together. We read about the, was it a flamethrower? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the very first project we did together. So like in total, we've probably done like 15 or so, 10 to 15 projects. So the flamethrower was the first one. And then we built like an electric skateboard that you could control with your fingers then we built a robotic tentacle. Um, then we built uh, like a game engine for augmented reality. And then it just like kind of kept going. Um, and then the glasses were the most recent one. That is crazy. Ironically, that was like the least amount of coding work. What are the ways that these could be used in a positive light? That's actually what we're pursuing right now. A lot of people have brought up like, oh, what if emergency workers could use this tech to pull up like medical records or identify people who are incapacitated? 
that would literally save lives. Another one was like, there's a, a few people who suffer from face blindness where they can't like recognize even their loved ones. I think a lot of people with Alzheimer's would also have the same like, benefit from this. But we do understand that originally the project was kind of to show the issues with privacy. So what do you hope people take away from this project now? Like, should everyone just kind of be like, oh, this is scary. We should scrub ourselves online. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaways are like, one, that there is much more data on the internet that is publicly available than people think, like literally down to your home address, even your social security number is accessible on the internet now. And then two, I think it's more of like a trend where ChatGPT and other language models can now automate a lot of tasks. That's what makes our thing fully automatic is because we have a chat GPT just like going around, like reading all these articles and then finding all this info. And then the third thing is like people should like go through our guide if they're worried. And we have a whole like guide on how to delete your data off of these databases. I think what was shocking for to Mabel and me when we were doing research is that you used only public publicly available data. Are you guys worried about it being in the wrong hands? And how could this be abused, this technology? We thought a lot about this before we posted the video. We didn't open source anything. So people couldn't just like download it and like see how it was exactly done. Mm -hmm. um, we obfuscated how it was done. We didn't sell any software. So a bunch of people offered a lot of money for what we built, but um, we just didn't sell anything. People use facial recognition for everything now, like in airports or unlocking phones. So mm -hmm. is privacy just like a luxury? Do you think that we don't have now? Are these tools just an inevitability? The reason they keep popping up is because facial recognition genuinely is very convenient. Like I, I do enjoy like going a little bit quicker through the airport. <laughs> uh, the way to like influence whether certain things go into the market or not is partially a social acceptance thing. Do you think it's about like social framing? Yeah, because at the end of the day, like anyone can build and launch these kinds of things. I mean, two undergrads did this in a few days, basically. So I think it's more of like, we have to think about what we accept in society or not. What more can you tell us about what you're developing now? Basically, it's uh, in real life social network the problem right now is like when you walk around in the real world you basically know nothing about anyone the way you express yourself as a person is limited to your clothes or like how you dress like all, like very simple stuff but what if you could make it whatever you wanted like oh this is like the thing i care the most about oh i love building things my entire life and i uh you know like code a lot or something and you can meet other people like that that's what we're working toward right now as a use case for this. Yeah, I, I think it could like make the world feel like a small town again, where everyone kind of knows everybody and you connect on a much deeper level.